Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you're excited about the conversation, but you're also a little nervous at the same time because that person knows you? I mean, like, for real, really knows you. And you know they know all your business, you know all their business, so you're not exactly sure how the conversation is gonna go. This is gonna be one of those conversations because I'm talking to my siblings today, members of my own family. It's gonna be a good one, so stay tuned. Actually, this is a welcome back because this is a conversation we've already been having. If you didn't see part one, please take an opportunity to you know, search around a little bit. Find part one of this conversation because it's, it was really great. We had a conversation together, my sister and I, about some great things that are going to help you in your life. Um, and we had a lot of fun, too. And I figured we want to amp up the fun uh, in the conversation by adding a couple more people from, from my family. And so I wanted to help you, I want to ask you to help me to welcome my baby brothers. Help me to welcome Anthony and Jonathan to the program today. Are we hugging? Oh. <laughs> Hi, John. What's going on? Okay, these, these are, let's see, are we in birth order? We're not in birth order. Okay, Crystal, no. outline the birth order situation. Okay, I'm number one, you're number two, three, and four. Best position in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, why is number four the best position in the house? Y'all know, the parents are already tired. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I get there, I can do anything, get away with anything. It doesn't matter anymore by the time I get there, so it's good. Okay, so Jonathan, while you're talking about uh, parents being tired and parents in general, tell them who our parents are for people who don't know and sort of about you know, our upbringing. Well, uh, Drs. Tony and Drs. Lois Evans. Um, they're our parents. Our upbringing was great. There's a lot of things I don't know because a lot of things happened before I got there. <laughs> All I knew is when I got there, the party was already happening. So, <laughs> it, was, it was really fun. Something that we all talk about is the table. You know, That was the most fun for me because being at the table and having my parents sit down and teach us all the things, getting all in our business. <laughs> uh, my dad would pull out the Bible and ha have everybody read a verse and then try to tell him what we thought it meant. And then he would be like, aunt, wrong. <laughs> now let me tell you what it really means. Um, so he would do that, and so we had fun. Well, this is the dinner table. He's talking about mom would, like three or four times a week, mom yeah. would make sure and dad would make sure we were around the dinner table. So, so it was cool. But I mean, great parents. Most people ask, well, what is it like to be pastor's son? I mean, you don't know any different. But at the same time, um, to most people's surprise, it's not, it wasn't overbearing. Daddy was very gracious. A lot of truth, but a lot of grace. Yeah. Um, and so my mom was the same way. So our mom was the same way. So it, it, it was really good. It was, it was really good. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to join at the right time. <laughs> it was good. You made the dinner table very fun, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, okay. there was no boundaries for me. Yeah. You yeah. danced at the dinner yeah, table. Yeah. Jonathan, yeah. how would y'all describe John John? He, Other than a character. That's, that's what that's I was going to yeah. say. It's character. a character. Yeah, he's, a, he's just funny. He was really loud growing up. He was a great Michael Jackson impersonator. I, so Jonathan, he, can you just do one Michael just Jackson one move one. like that you would do at the dinner table? <laughs> Come on, Jonathan. Know, give I'm us 36 one. 36 now. I don't want to tear my... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so nothing. Not gonna, uh, you're not going to do... Y'all want to do a Michael Jackson yes! move? Yes! We need a Michael Jackson move! Come on! Come on, give us right something. Now. Right. Don't dun, show this to my kids. You gotta stand the light. You gotta stand the light. The light, but it's carpet. How you gonna slide on carpet? You can do it. Give us this anything. Okay, just okay. Uh huh. There we go. 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 Okay, so Jonathan is our kind of lighthearted, always just sort of down for whatever kind of brother. And then there's Anthony. <laughs> so, I don't know what's so funny. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, yeah. No, no. Let, let Jonathan describe no, you, No, let me describe me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, uh, well. Uh, <laughs> no, Anthony, Anthony loves family. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing he loves and protects is his family. 
The other thing that he loves and protects is his stuff. <laughs> Don't mess with his stuff. Um, I used to go in his room, and I would go in We his shared room. a room. It was our room. Right, but I'm going in there from the den. Okay. And I'd try to sneak in there while you weren't watching so that I could play with some of his toys. He was older, so he had better toys. You know, so I got bored with mine real quick. And, you know, I'd reach out to touch and swack up. I mean, <laughs> don't touch my stuff. But, I mean, I understand it now because I have two boys at home, and the younger one is always breaking the older one's stuff. <laughs> so now I'm learning why <laughs> I, I, was, I was having to deal with it. But Anthony's real protective of his family. He loves his family. He loves his nieces and nephews. I mean, he's just a lovable guy. Yeah, lovable he's a lovable guy. guy. Most of you know Anthony probably in some form or fashion from music. So Anthony, talk to us a little bit about music and how that sort of became a part of your life. Like, why, why did you fall in love with music and how did that yeah. become your career? It wasn't a thing. Growing up, I was um, kind of to myself, a little bit quieter. I enjoyed animals a lot. I wanted to be a large animal vet when I grew up. That's what I wanted to do. And my dad heard me singing and at our church, you can't go to our church without being involved in a ministry. Like, you can't, you have to do something. And they heard me singing and th thought, like, you're going to sing at the church. So, long story short, I, my, I sang, my dad recorded it, sent it off to Liberty University, did all this behind-the-scenes work, and then <laughs> said, hey, you have a full ride to Liberty to be a part of a PR group, and so it's a full ride. So God says you're going there. And then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the passion for singing followed after that, like my feelings followed my feet on that one because I was not into singing at all. Like my first year, I didn't like it because I was, it was like rigorous and for singers, wasn't into it. And I remember the director telling me when I was 18, if you want to do this for a living, you can. He said it way back when I first started and he knew I didn't love it that much, but the passion came later on and it's uh, eight albums later and a lot of events with my family and, and a lot of tours and stuff of it and I, I enjoy it now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And so, how would you describe Crystal's personality? No, 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 you're next. Yeah. Why you do gotta, I have to be next? Because you're, you're I'm going the in, interviewer yes, here. Yes, but we're going in order. So, but, right. so who's going to describe me? I, I will do it. <laughs> so, for those of you who are wondering, Priscilla, growing up, out of the four of us, she got in trouble the most, which I know we'd all agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> She's try she was like, oh, my God, are you saying this? <laughs> yeah. So Priscilla got in trouble the most, but it's because she had this unbridled, huge personality. Mm -hmm. And it was just unbridled. So she talked a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. And now what's amazing to me, we do these events together, because she talks, now she talks the same amount, but it just all makes a lot of sense. It's just, it's really, it's like a whole, it's really a great, it's, it's, it's great. So she just had a huge person, she still has a big personality. Um, and very independent. You weren't, you weren't outwardly fearful of much to me like you wanted to, to do you, if you wanted to do something you would figure out a way to do it that's just the that was the bottom line you you mm -hmm. you knew what you wanted and you would just go after it and that's well what, that was what, kind what, thank yeah. you anthony that wasn't as bad as it could have been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay who's got crystal you me i'm gonna get you yes okay well i kind of already described a little bit crystal was a perfectionist overachiever right? overachiever for sure super smart super smart yeah. man we just kind of were all underneath crystal's shadow of perfection in our house right yeah yeah but it's not about you set a high standard though okay that's great yeah, that's <laughs> what are your fondest memories <laughs> it's a good thing though okay it's a good thing what are your fondest memories of what are your well, let's see. I was going to ask you. You said of Crystal, so that made me think, what are our fond fondest memories of each other? And the reason why I'm asking that question is because <laughs> people really do ask us a lot about our family. Mm -hmm. um, they want to know about our parents, so we'll talk more about them. But they also want to know why we're so close. We have a very, very close-knit family. Which, which I thought was really normal. I thought that was normal, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was normal, and I thought pastors stayed at their churches. I, I thought, yeah. like... I, until I went to college, did I realize that pastors switched in and out because our dad started yeah. that church 40, 40, 41. 40, 41, 41 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, he just stayed there. So, and and he also instilled in us that family is that's it. That's the bottom line. That's what's at the end of the day after ministries and books and all that said. Family is what it is. So we'd be like, Anthony, play with your brother, and I'd be like, No, I don't want to play with your brother. He's the only brother you have in the world. Like that, he would instill that in me, and now that's that's what I think. I have one of these in the whole universe. That's how I think of him. And I have two of them, so I can pick which one, you know. But I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. 
So daddy was just real big on the family thing. My, my fondest memory is every August we would get packed up into a van. It was a minivan sometimes. Um, and we would drive from Dallas all the way to Baltimore where my dad grew up every because he, year. every year, we'd drive the whole way. He'd drive through the night and we would have these, Crystal be reading a book. Um, I'd be, <laughs> she yeah. would. I'd be watching a movie. I don't know what you'd be doing. I don't know. I don't know. Writing a boy a letter or something. <laughs> 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 and uh, no, so he instilled in us just f family is what matters. So that trip to me and spending all of our time with our extended family in Baltimore, that is my, my fondest memory of growing up, what, what he instilled in us as it relates and to And I think, child. just to be clear, I think we should describe, like you just said, I was a lot of work for our parents growing up. I was a lot of work. But I think we should describe a little bit more what we looked like, for example, at that dinner table or in that minivan. And the reason is because I think people see us now and they have this vision that we must have been just, we must not be like their family. You know what I mean? Where their kids are rowdy or they're, they can't even imagine having devotions with their kids because their kids won't sit still long enough. And so they think that we must have been sitting around the table like little cherubs. We were giggling and cracking to, jokes. Yes. And, and he'd be like, Crystal, stop it. I'd be like, <laughs> You know, it was yeah. that kind of situation, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we weren't sitting there taking it all in. We were, we were being kids. Yeah. We were being kids. Right. Yeah. It's, it's out of control. It's out of control as my house is now. I have a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought it was all good when we had two, but we didn't know that that was man-to-man -man defense. That third one, whoo <laughs> um, But now we're at the table, and, and I'm, I'm redoing the same thing. Because yeah. that's what we knew. So I'm sitting at the table. Uh, my wife sits down. You know, I'm trying to have J uh, Jonathan the second. We call him J2, just to throw a little swag on it. Uh, J2, he'll, he'll try to pull out the chair for Kelsey. So we, we're doing that table stuff, but it's a disaster. I yeah. mean, <laughs> I literally have two to three minutes. And yeah. then I find myself getting up, doing a song and a dance to keep their attention. There's food flying across the table. And now I realize how dedicated my, our parents are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to the same thing over and over again. And when they had to say, Jonathan, and my dad would always check with my mom to see if it was okay. You know, what are we going to do here? You know, yeah. so yeah. it was chaos. But, but now that's what we remember. Yeah. We remember, and that's what we're still doing. So that, that's a big deal. I think that I'm so glad you said that because I really think that frees a lot of people up to know that it, it's okay for it to look like chaos. Your kids still catch they still can. They catch what you're doing intentionally and deliberately over the long haul. Even going on vacation, we look back on it fondly now, but those long road trips in the minivan with all four of us. It was chaos. It was chaos, you know, <laughs> but they were just, they just did it every summer, yeah. whether we, you know, we didn't have to like it. That was their choice as parents. Well, and they rubbed off on, on I us, I think right? our, our parents were not uh, discouraged with, with, them, with things that, would come across as mundane or super re re repetitive as kids. Like they, they just kept, our dad especially, he's very like, stick to it, things don't bother him, they don't throw him way off. And I think them continuing to do that same thing, even though things were chaotic with us, still in, it instilled in us like what it, what it is now. Like they, they didn't go, these kids aren't paying attention, let's not do this anymore. They kept doing it. And, and we now cherish this more than anything. More than yeah. anything. The greatest. So what, what's um, something that is actually hard for you now because of, because of the way we were raised or a challenge that you have well, it now? Made me, it made me naive, what we were ta speaking about at the beginning. I didn't understand how to do ministry or how to, because I didn't understand what people were going through. Or I would go to a, like you said about pastors coming in and out and stuff like that. I was like, what is this? You know yeah. what I mean? Or um, someone, how, what they felt with not having a father around and all of those different things. So I had to learn those through experience and I had to learn to be, you know, uh, more grace, uh, not less truth, but more grace mm -hmm. on top of truth mm -hmm. where I would be like, well, this is, this is kind of the way it is. And, you know, God had to take me through my own set of circumstances to realize you're not better than anybody. And just because you came from that little house where, you know, everything's the Brady Bunch, that you have your own set of issues. And once I realized that, I was able to minister better. So he had to actually take me out of that nest, you know, to allow me to have my own experiences where I wasn't riding the coattail of my parents' relationship with God. I had to have my own. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't realize until I left the nest that I was riding their coattail. I didn't have a relationship. That's exactly. Uh, yeah. So that, that's kind of That's exactly what I was going to say. I, I realized in college that God does not have grandkids, which is what you were just saying about the yeah. coattails. Yeah, yeah like it, that was the hardest realization for me 
to realize that, oh, God doesn't have grandkids. I have to figure this out myself. And I felt this total despair when I realized that me being Tony Evans Jr. meant nothing. And I don't know why <laughs> I thought that, what thought it did, but just my environment was super. And I realized I had to make decisions for myself <clears throat> as it relates to my relationship with the Lord. That was a weird, yep. a weird phase in my life. And then I realized that church, unintentionally, I had allowed church environment, not my parents, to build up a lot of um, pretense in me and, and, or guarded or present this thing, make, make everybody think everything's good. And I was kind of at, at a point, I'm, and I'm the super emotional kid. I say this all the time, like, out of all of us, I'm the, the edgy one that has all these emotional issues, you know, and like, I look like a football player, but some days I have the emotions of a ballerina, whatever. You know what I mean? So, like, so I had to deal with a lot of, a lot of things inside of me and I had to be honest, vulnerable, and authentic with myself where I was at that time and what I needed to do in spite of how good I was at put, pulling it up and putting it together because that's how we grew up. Mm -hmm. We're just preacher's kids. You got to just, you just know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So that was very, What very did you say about trash in the back? You hold it like you... Oh, yeah. I had a, um, a friend in high school who, it's, I should, yeah, I'm not going to say the name. That'd be weird. Uh, their house was not very clean, but their mom <laughs> didn't want to put the trash out on the sidewalk so everybody would know how much trash was in their house. So they wow. didn't necessarily clean the house. So they kept, a, it just, it became like a hoarding situation, like a horrible situation because they didn't want everybody outside to see what was going on on the inside. And I did that with myself. I kept a lot of stuff inside because I didn't want to put the trash out and let everybody see that what, all that trash was in there. And what I have had to realize is that my objective, and is no, I'm not concerned anymore with what everybody's going to think. I need to be, I need to make sure that I get stuff out and know that the ultimate trash man who recycles everything is coming by and will grab it and repurpose everything that I put out and give to him. Yeah, so that, that's that great. has been, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, do you think that your kids can be in too much of a bubble that in some way it, um, <laughs> it hampers their ability to function well when they leave to go to college, for example, because none of us went to college and were saints, by the way. Um, for anybody that might be, you Speak were not. Speak for yourself. No, I was great. You were great in college? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just <laughs> spoke for all four of us. No, not me. You're... <laughs> okay, other than the perfect one right here, the rest of us, you know, didn't go off to college and make all the right choices. So... Do you think that the fact that we were in a little bit of a bubble, meaning that our life sort of revolved around mm -hmm. um, Christian circles, um, you know, we, youth group, you know what I mean? Um, we were in private school up until our freshman year or so. Did you go to public school before freshman year? You did. When did you I go did. to public school? I went to a lot of schools. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in fifth grade. I, well, I was at Adele Turner in, That's the, right. in the second public and third school. grade. That's public where y'all yeah. made fun of my laugh. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, I went to another school where I had to get a little help there. Hit the five grade twice, but not because I failed. I had started <laughs> school early. I started school when I was four, so my parents said, well, you started too early. So they so made I, you repeat it. So they made me repeat the fifth grade twice, which was kind of weird friends-wise. Friends uh, but, but it was good for you. But, but it was good. Yeah. It was good. And so, but yeah, I did a, a different track. Yeah. Last kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we heard about that, that you also got to eat out a lot. Yep. We never yeah. ate we out. We never ate it. out. You were like, we never ate at home. We were always yeah. like... <laughs> we were always out. We were spending money, having a good time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said, by the time, by time I got, you know, kind of in high school, y'all were all gone. Yeah. And uh, basically, Mostly Anthony college. was kind of there. Right. So and my mom was like, I'm done. Like, <laughs> We're going out Where to eat. Where are we going? Yeah, yeah. Going out. Okay, yeah every good. day. So what's next? <laughs> but you know what? I, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. My, my oldest son, I'll never forget, we were watching TV. He was probably about eight years old. And, um, and, and we were talking about color and race. And I used us in a sentence to describe us being black people. Okay. And he looked at me and he said, I'm not black. And I said, what do you, what do you mean you're not black? And he said, I'm not black, I'm, I'm brown, my skin is, is tan. And because of just of where we were and who we were hanging with, like he didn't have, just to, to your point about the bubble, is, and I think that's kind of how it works for us. It's like, what do you mean? There's, there's people out here who really don't know Jesus, like outside of the church, like you know that, but being engaged. So 
So um, I think our parents did a great job of being intentional about connecting us with other people. But I think that's one of the things I think that I've tried to do even more so with my kids, just, just getting them out of the, because I'm not, you know, on staff at our church in the sense where this is our whole life and we're doing other things. I think you have to be intentional about exposing your kids. And the best way to expose your kids is to expose yourself, that whatever you're doing, whoever you're engaging with, that your kids are engaging the, in the same way. Okay. So do you think that, do you think in a way that we were kind of protected too much from, or from the exposure that you're talking about, just exposure of people that are, just live differently than we live? We could have been, um, we could have been, but I don't think that they were thing. trying to do, I think they were just living their life, yeah, which yeah, happened was to our be life. that yeah. deal. But I, you know, I'm kind of big on this. We talk about this from time to time, but, um, and I think y'all talked about it a little bit, but you got to be careful to not try to take God's place. Right. You know, God is the one who's going to, you know, he's sovereign. He's going to make these things happen for them and take them, use everything, recycle it to get so I think we try to create these environments to try to pigeonhole to our kids into what we see them becoming. And when, when it doesn't happen that way, we feel like we failed. But that's because you tried to be God. And you can't do that. You can't try to take his place. And uh, sometimes we have those situations. I was reading, uh, I think it was Chuck Swindoll's Grace Awakening. It's a great book. Yeah, and it says, for grace, sometimes you have to let people go. Because if you don't get out the way, they won't experience God. You know what I mean? And so... We put that weight on ourselves. So I'm raising these kids and I'm saying, I'm going to teach them. I'm going to pray for them. But, you know, if Adam and Eve can mess up the garden, what better environment can you get? Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, so, it, it, so I think that we take that pressure off of ourselves, not to not do our job, but to understand that God will do his job. You sound <laughs> like you should pastor a church, Don John. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I think our parents did a good job. I think, you know, we all went to public school and high school. Um, and, you know, and then we made the decisions about what colleges we'd go to. And I don't, I don't think that they, you know, hung on and tried to protect to the nth degree. Just by virtue of who they were and what they were doing, that naturally influenced a lot of our environment. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I just think that in the same way, that's what's going to happen. Who, who you're around as a couple or parents or whatever, that's what your kids are going to be around a lot. But I think you can also be intentional, not so much about getting your kids out there, but getting yourself out there mm -hmm. and letting your kids be engaged with you in that process. What, um, Anthony, you said something interesting a few minutes ago. You were talking about dad, you know, s recording you and sending it to Liberty University. Mm -hmm. And really, that's where your singing career started because from there... Kirk Franklin called you and wanted you to travel with him and sing back up for him. And then from there, or Truth came first. You yeah. sang with the singing group called Truth. I mean, it just dovetailed from there, and now you're in this career. And I'm wondering if you guys can speak to, because I, I have a similar story I'll, I'll tell, but speak to how your parents were influential in where you are now. What, what are little connective tissue, little dots you can look back to and see that um, maybe you didn't realize until years later that they were sort of behind the scenes helping orchestrate something that you just thought at the time was organic, but actually, no, your parents were there helping you. Well, I, sorry, I know you, were you talking to me? Uh, everybody, <laughs> all of us, all of okay, us. Okay, yeah, well, I, 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 as you f f surmised that question, I thought about the fact that Daddy did put a lot of the dots on the paper and everything, but us watching him and, him and our mom's work ethic is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. He, he did send me to Liberty, he did do all that stuff, but my dad and my mom worked really hard and, and thinking now about how it was back then, like we grew up, um, my dad did Promise Keepers a lot, like when that was real big, and, and he was on a lot of radio stations that at, at that time were not playing any African American anything, like pre nothing. So thinking about that now in how the 80s, what that was for him to be so immersed in that and be doing that, how much work it took, how much criticism came that we didn't know because we were protected and sheltered. We, I, I think watching our dad push into his calling, and my, and my mom, push into his calling in spite of what people around him are saying, that is why I'm here and why you're here and why you're here and why you're here. Yeah. That, that, that ethic is, is yeah, why. Yeah, I mean, I think my parents, while I, you know, I knew I was capable in an educational situation, what they called out of me was one of the, it's the same thing he said even when I found out I was pregnant. He was just like, you'll be able to keep climbing. They always told me, oh, oh Crystal, if you're going to, you're thinking about um, um, 
being a lawyer? Okay, well, <clears throat> let, me, let me connect you with this judge I know. Mm. Like, and he would always say, hey, for me, it was always whatever you want to do, you're, you have the capacity to go to the highest level of that. So don't settle for this. God has blessed you with a brain that works a certain way. Make sure you shoot for the top. It was always the way he communicated. And I mean, if I can just steal the thunder a little bit, just real quickly, he always said to you, when you would get in trouble for talking, okay, but you're a good talker, so God can use something with that. Anthony, he called out the singing. Jonathan, you were always interested in sports. And what our parents did very consistently and still do, they still do this, they see the best side of whatever is happening <laughs> and they call out the best version of that. They say, you should do something with that. Um, you should work towards this. And if they have the ability or the cap cap capability of helping us connect the dots, even if they can't physically do something, they, they in the spiritual realm, I think they do something because they, they speak those things as though they are. They understand that the power of life and death lies in the tongue, and they have regularly and consistently spoken life over us. Yeah. So. And picking me up in the area, you know, and, and you guys too, in the areas where you're, you're yeah. not good. Yeah. Because for me, it was school. Right. You know, my mom would always, you know, tell me, Jonathan, you're, you're smart as a whip, and you're going to be something. I'm telling you, you're going to be something. It's going to be something. I don't know what it's going to be, <laughs> but it's going to be something. And so she would speak into that, because I talked about going to all of these different schools because they were trying to figure out what to do with me educationally. Yeah. Because you were because struggling. I was struggling. I wasn't yeah. picking up stuff. I started reading real late, you know, so they were trying to figure out what to do. They got me tested and all, all types of stuff that I had to go through. And, and figure that out. But, you know, with my dad, I just saw it, you know, as uh, what does is, what is Romans 8 said? If God is for you, then who can be against you? And in my mind, I was like, but do you know who my dad is, though? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing well, but he's going to find a way. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? And so I failed my ACT. So here I am. I've got 15 Division I scholarships for football, and all of them are going away because I can't pass my SAT and ACT. So the scholarships are leaving, and I'm like, ah, I'm the last kid, and here I am. I'm going to have to go to community college, and she went to U of H. She went to Texas A&M. He went to Liberty, all full scholarships, and I'm going to fail the family type thing because I can't get the school thing down, and here I am a senior. I still can't get it down. And uh, my dad was working behind the scenes. Our dad was working behind the scenes. I got to keep forgetting. We all keep saying my parents, my parents, they're our parents. <laughs> but that's good because we have, this is, you could preach on this, we have our own individual relationship. With our own. Come on, John. John. <laughs> <laughs> so keep going. So, uh, where was I? So yeah. So he was working behind the scenes, and he figured out a way, due okay. to the testing that I had when I was six, to get me a no time test. Right. Because the doctor said that the problem was the time and the pressure. If I could sit, so I took that ACT from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. <laughs> Diligently, I looked at every answer. I mean, just, just combing through it and ended up, ended up passing the test, getting a scholar, full scholarship to Baylor because he was diligently working behind the scenes in an area where I was weak. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's so find great. A way. To find that's a way. So great. Find a way. And um, I'll, I'll echo that, too, with, with this, because as you were talking, I was just thinking about that, that diligence and that thought, that, that thought that they were putting in, that mindfulness to each of our uniquenesses. So as was mentioned, you know, if, if I would get a demerit or something from school, it was, it was because I was talking and I wasn't supposed to be talking. And so they didn't, they didn't ignore the fact that I wasn't being obedient and, and, you know, that I needed to follow the rules. I would be disciplined for that. But then in the next breath, there would be a conversation about the ability to communicate. I, I mean, he would always have a conversation about, like you said, what is, what's the useful part of this? And let's mold this by the Holy Spirit and see if this is something God actually wants to use in your life. I did not know until years and years later. Um, let me back up and say, when I was in college, every now and then someone would call and say, hey, will you come lead a Bible study? That's really how ministry started for me. I would just get a call, somebody saying, hey, there are 10 women meeting. Would you come do a Bible study? And I would do that. Um, but right after I graduated from college, I got a call from the Zig Ziglar Corporation saying, we do a Bible study every Monday morning. Would you come and do a Bible study for us? Well, I didn't know until two decades later that it's because dad had called Zig Ziglar and had said, hey, I have a daughter who I, I would love to come and do a Bible study for you guys if you will have her. And so that connectedness, um, even with, with Zig for a lot of years, he's like a grandfather to me. 
um, you know, you don't know until looking back that it was it was dad and mom sort of behind the scenes just saying, you know what, this thing is getting this kid in trouble, but actually, this might actually be how the Lord has wired them. And if I have to look back, I would say that that's one of the main things in my own parenting now that I've taken away is that the stuff that's most frustrating to you now about whatever kid you're dealing with, that could be the gift. Like that could be it. Um, if we'll just steward it wisely, you know? So is there anything else more that, like that come to, come to your mind? Funny story that you remember about any of us? That time I let you hit the wooden floor. What? You remember that? Yes, girl. Uh, she told me to trust her and fall back into her arms. <laughs> <laughs> we had to be like eight and six, seven and five. And I did it once and caught you. Then I said, now do it again just and just relax. Just, just relax. Just set me up. And just was like, bam. <laughs> you just wanted to share that? That's, That's the only all thing yeah. I know. Had? And thank you for watching the chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say, <coughs> I was just going to say, I just think too, we have all these great memories, but we, I mean, we fought, we were kids. Yeah. We, we, you know, there were times where we didn't like each other. I told you not to touch my stuff. I mean, there was that. Yeah. They were yes. both super bossy. Yes. Very, very, very bossy. I don't recall very that. Bossy. I will say, however, in closing, I will say <laughs> that what's really cool is when you sort of live long enough that you start to just see the faithfulness of God from one generation to the next. So as she mentioned, me falling back into her arms and hitting the floor, um, <laughs> the bedroom that they, that happened in yes. um, was in my parents, our first home. So um, from the time we were born to about seven years old for me, my parents lived in one house. Then they moved to another house, which is the house they still live in to this, to this day. We spent all of our childhood there. But the house that my parents first owned, where me and Crystal shared a room and this incident happened, <laughs> um, that house sort of has stayed in our family. Um, a little small house on a little back road in, in um, Oak Cliff, Texas. And it kind of um, has stayed in our family, um, passing through different hands. But now, Karis, who we talked about earlier, Karis and her husband just bought their first home. And their first home is my parents' first home. So they just moved into that house in the last few months. They have renovated that house. And so now my, our parents' great-granddaughter great is now living in the room where me and Crystal um, uh, had our first experiences of trusting each other. Yes. <laughs> but my point in saying all of that is I marvel for mom and dad because how many times in that house when their kids were little, you, you guys weren't even here yet. We we're just little and you're like about three at the time or so. How many times did they pray and say, Lord, we pray for our kids. We pray for our grandkids. We pray for our great grandkids, never knowing that if they just stuck to the task at hand for 40, 50 years, here they are now looking at their great grandchildren mm -hmm. living in the house where they planted those seeds. Just came to the house warming. Yeah, yeah, we just went to the house warming there. So I just want to encourage all of you who are in the midst of raising kids. We're certainly not, we weren't perfect kids. We're still not perfect kids, but you weren't perfect. Oh, okay. I started out that way, though. <laughs> But I just want to encourage you guys that, you know, your kids are picking up stuff. They're picking yes. up stuff. You're just deliberate and just intentional, um, just faithful to do the thing day in and day out. Your kids are picking up things that are going to affect not only their own lives, but really they're going to affect their kids' lives, your grandkids who are to come. So even if you feel like you haven't done it right up till now, you know, today's a great day to start. <laughs> just start. Just choose the path that you want to go, the vision you have for your family, and then in incremental steps, put things in place so that you can um, impact your, your kids and the direction of your generations to come in the way that you, that you want to and that the Lord is leading you to. Thank y'all for flying from Dallas to Nashville to sit down on my sofa. I know y'all are very, very busy people, but I appreciate you spending some time with me. Would you guys help me to thank my siblings? <laughs>